Hello and welcome. In today's recipe, I'm going to be showing you how to make the best, quick and easy tinga de pollo. And if you stick around to the end, I'm going to show you how to assemble the best tinga queso tacos. To your Instant Pot, you want to add your water. And I'm using kettle hot water. Hot water is not necessary. It just speeds up the process when I use a kettle. Add your chicken bouillon and go ahead and stir that to make sure that it starts dissolving properly into our water. We don't want any kind of clumping in here. Add your chicken and if you're using a large chicken, make sure to slice it in half so that it cooks thoroughly with the time that I'm gonna be giving you. It's like I'm trying to find pieces of myself and they don't exist. But I guess that's what people go through when they go through a divorce after many years, right? It's, yeah, I, I wish I could tell you different, but it's, that's what it is. It's nothing, nothing else. It's not, I don't, I'm not in love with anybody. I'm not in love with my ex. I'm not in love with the life that I used to live. I hated it. Go ahead and add your tomatoes and slice them in half. Just make sure that they fit in the pot. And it's okay if they completely fall apart because this method I'm about to show you guys, it's going to blow your mind and cut your time in half, if not more. Go ahead and add your onions, garlic, bay leaves. Make sure you remove the stems and the seeds uh, from your guajillo chiles. And if you left a few of them like I did there, it's not a big deal, I promise you. So go ahead and add them in here and sprinkle your black pepper. And I'm using coarse black pepper. If you're using fine uh, black pepper, use half of the suggestion in the description area. Press your chiles down, make sure that you soak them in the broth. Place your lid on your pressure cooker. Seal the deal. Many of you have mentioned that your Instant Pot, you're having a difficult time sealing. So when you feel the pressure come up right here through your pin, you kind of want to jiggle and make sure that it's nice and tight and that you maneuver it here a little bit. But if you guys have a different pressure cooker that you guys recommend, make sure to let me know in the description area. I would love to try it if it's gonna um, help me with that particular step that I'm not crazy about. We're gonna pressure cook today for 35 minutes. Set your burner on a medium heat. And next, you wanna add your chorizo. After two minutes, you're gonna see that everything has loosened up, and that's when you wanna place it on a medium low heat. Okay, and come in here and stir every other minute until you get to about six to eight minutes. And we'll show you what that looks like when it's done. And after six minutes, it really does cook quickly and you see the color uh, has changed and you are ready, my friends. Next, we're gonna add our onions. After you stirred your onions into your chorizo, you wanna place your burner on a simmer and you wanna place a lid over it. This is gonna allow those onions to sweat properly and we are gonna avoid burning our chorizo. Once you see that your onions are nice and soft like this, just go ahead and set this pan to the side and we are ready to get started with our delicious uh, tinga sauce. Beautiful, beautiful. Go ahead and take your chiles, your tomato, your garlic and place it into your blender. We are gonna blend everything in here but the chicken. This is gonna be super easy to shred. So we're gonna place our chicken in our bowl and everything else that's in here, we are going to blend. And I like to use a skimmer for this part in case one of our little wings fell off. We can just move it to the side and then you're gonna place all of this deliciousness into your blender. Once you've skimmed your broth to make sure you don't have any kind of uh, chicken bones hanging out in there, um, go ahead and take some of your broth and place it in your blender. We wanna make sure that this is really, really smooth. So the more broth we have in here, the better our blend and the smoother our sauce. And now we're just gonna blend it until smooth and that's gonna take me about a minute. I'm gonna start at a low and then I'm gonna pick up the speed. Once you've blended your sauce for about a minute, you'll notice that we have a little bit more space and that's when you wanna add your chipotles and your remaining broth. Make sure to get all that adobo sauce. Once you've blended your chiles, make sure to strain them so that we can get rid of any kind of uh, chili skins you have in here or anything extra. We just want it to be silky smooth. Once you're done straining your sauce, you wanna add one cup of water to the broth in the pot. 
Now take the pot that we filled with the sauce and place it on a simmer. We're gonna use this for our tinga. To our onions and chorizo, we wanna add our tinga sauce. And I do have my burner on a medium heat. And next, you just wanna add your shredded chicken. Mix gently so that we can coat the chicken with the sauce, ooh. And next, you wanna add your ground cumin. Go ahead and combine that into the sauce and you're gonna place your burner on a medium low heat. You're gonna to continue to cook for about eight minutes and just make sure to come and stir periodically. And boom, done amigos. You are about to experience the best tinga you've ever had in your life. And we are just gonna amplify this recipe because you know I get bored easily and I did not wanna get bored with tinga because it is so delicious, but this is ready. This is ready to pour over rice. This is ready for your tostadas, your burritos. But what we're ready for is tinga quesa tacos. Oh yeah. Drizzle a little bit of oil today. I'm using peanut oil to make this nice and crispy. Place your corn tortilla. Fill it up with a little bit of magic. Add your desired amount of cheese. Today I am using asadero cheese, which just tastes amazing. Amigos, you guys have to get a hold of it. It's so good. And I'm gonna continue making a few more. You can make this with a corn tortilla or you can make it with a flour tortilla. And I'll show you in just a moment. Same thing, add your chicken, cheese. And these will be done in about two to three minutes. And we are ready to serve, amigos. Say ah. Wow. This is like the most perfect thing to eat right now. If you're gonna be making tacos for the remaining year and for the rest of your life, this is a taco you do not wanna miss out on. I suggest you make this broth. I suggest you dip it and soak it and enjoy it as much as I am. This is out of this world. It's absolutely the best flavor. It's not overly spicy and it's just absolutely perfect. I know you're gonna say, how many times are you gonna dip it? It's just really fun to dip it and it's definitely fun to enjoy this cheesiness. It's so good. And save some on the side. Ooh! <laughs> Hello and welcome to The Views Kitchen. Happy Taco Tuesday, amigos. Today we're gonna to be making chicken tacos dorados and you can have them with consomme or you can have a wet taco. And we have a bonus in this recipe. We're gonna be showing you how Cloud makes her chicken in the Instant Pot. Now let's go over our ingredients. To bring out that delicious flavor in your Instant Pot chicken that you all saw, you're gonna need this liquid concentrated chicken base, okay? If you don't have this, you can still make this recipe, just use your regular chicken bouillon or salt, and make sure to look in the description area for the recommendations, but this is definitely a dream. Cloud will link details in the description area on how you guys can get this. For our chicken, we're also gonna be using onion, tomato, garlic, black pepper, and Mexican oregano. And you're gonna need some water. To your whole chicken, you wanna add your water. If my water looks steamy, it's because I'm using a kettle. Add your chicken base, your liquid concentrate, and make sure you're adding it towards the water. You don't want it to get stuck on top of the chicken, okay? Next, add your pepper your Mexican oregano, garlic, and your tomato. And I'm just gonna push that tomato inside the chicken. There we go. Your onion. Now let's wash our hands so that we can press some buttons. Make sure that you close your vent. That means sealing. Press your poultry button. And we are gonna cook for 25 minutes. Or we're gonna instant pot for 25 minutes. <laughs> 
Now let's go over the rest of our ingredients, friends. Corn tortillas, hatched chili. For our toppings, we have shredded mozzarella cheese, but you can use whatever melty cheese you have at home. Chopped cabbage, queso cotija, and some cilantro. For our purple pickled onions, you're gonna need a purple onion, and if you like spice, you can add a little bit of your serrano or your jalapeno. You're gonna add your lemon or lime juice, white vinegar, and salt. Now mix those ingredients around. And boom, done. Our chicken is ready. I'm gonna switch it over to our stand mixer so that we can shred our chicken. Next, I'm gonna add our green chili and I'm gonna mix it quickly, not for too long, okay? Now it's time to go fishing. Take your onion and your garlic and whatever other veggie you have floating around. And if for some reason you end up removing most of your, um, your Mexican oregano, just sprinkle a little bit more in there, okay? Because that's so delicious and oregano and chicken is just so good for your health. Unless you're allergic. I'm gonna warm up my tortillas just enough to where they're pliable to fold and they're not gonna break. And you wanna put your desired amount you have the little ones, you can put a little bit less. If you have a hungry, hungry foodie, you guys already know what I wanted to say. Friends, I have my pan on a medium heat. I added about one fourth of a cup of oil. It's nice and hot and ready to go. No, you guys can't see it bubbling. Oh yeah, you can. Yeah, you can. And friends, I have my Captain America shield because she's gonna be frying. It's not gonna be that bad. It's not deep fried, it's a gentle fry. I'm that person that has the shield when I'm frying. ¿Cómo se dice eso? Exagerada. Yes. You're not exaggerating though. All right, start placing them down. Now I'm gonna continue to fry until they're nice and crispy. You see the difference with enough oil, and then you see the difference when you don't have enough oil. So I know that you guys are watching your oil, but that has a lot to do when you're making your, your tacos so that they come out more perfect or more burnt. Some people actually like these. I like the burnt side. I have a variety, friends. Make it comfortable for your home and your family, and they're gonna come back for more. Right after you're done with your tacos, I like to sprinkle a little bit of salt. Gives it that good flavor when you bite into it. You trickster. What? Because if it I'm tastes, trickster? it tastes like a tortilla chip. Yeah, it does. <laughs> it, it fools you. Yes. <laughs> Skillet is not just for fajitas, okay? Uh, we have this linked in the Amazon storefront, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some picolitos right here. Thank you, beans. Thank you. We'll bring the cheese right here. Okay, yes, bring the cheese. I'm gonna place my taquitos right here. The cabbage. And I'll meet you on the island for the finale. Now who's ready for a good time? I'm ready. Are you ready for a good time? Are you ready for a good time? And taste some on the side. Woo! <laughs> Careful if you eat this because it's hot. So now you're gonna take some of your queso and you're gonna wrap it around. I'm gonna take a big bite. That one cracked on me, but you know I use everything.
All right. All right. Now the other way is sprinkle some cabbage and you do want to let it drop everywhere. There's something about when you have the last pieces that it falls everywhere that you pick up that just, that just makes it. So you can either use cabbage or you can use lettuce. Okay. But if you're going to do the other style, definitely go with cabbage. Some cotija cheese. And finish it off with a little bit of cilantro. And by a little bit, I mean a lot. Woo! Sorry, friends, I can't focus. <laughs> you don't have to put the broth on it, but we highly recommend it. I like it like this. I really do. It's just really hot to pick up right now. And then as you go, you can put a little bit of your cabbage. And I love the way that broth tastes with cabbage. It's a queso fundido, pretty much. Just eat that. Eat that. I'm in heaven right now. This is exactly how it should be. Because you want to put your hand on your hip and then you want to dip and dip and dip. Just like that. Because when I dip, you dip. We dip. And we dip. And let it drip. You see that motion? That's what we want. We got it. It's really not. You guys don't wait for this one. I'm going to let you see. <laughs> mm. I don't know. They're both so great. Dunk it. Well, you can have one version for lunch and the other for dinner. So this version can be lunch and the other one can be dinner. Yeah, you got to do this like like 23, man. Dunk it like Jordan here. Mm -hmm. The broth is the best part to wash it down with. I know, forget the agua fresca right now. Mm -hmm. If your mommy makes you this Views Club Junior, please make sure you eat everything on your plate. Or I don't know how can. messy I look and I'm not interested because I'm eating tacos and everything's forgiven on Taco Tuesday. Hello and welcome to the Views Kitchen. Today I'm gonna be showing you how to make pinto beans in your Instant Pot and I'll also be showing you how to make borracho beans in your Instant Pot. Now let's get started. Add your water, add your salt, Done. add your beans. Make sure that you're cleaning and washing your beans. You don't want to get stuck with one of those little stones that get in those bags of beans, friends. Don't forget, for really good flavor in your beans, you can add onion and garlic. But I'm going to be using these beans for another recipe, so now we're just going to seal it. Let's seal the beans. By that I mean close the lid and seal it. Pressure cook, 40 minutes. Friends, after the 40 minutes have elapsed, you're not gonna release any of the steam. You're gonna let it set there for an extra 20 minutes. And boom, done friends. It's a 40 minute pressure cook and 20 minutes let it rest under the pressure and then release, okay? I'll have all that in the description for you as I mentioned. And let me show you. They're nice and soft. All right, friends, I'm gonna take some of these beans out, but for those of you that want this for your daily use and other dishes, it's perfectly done. Now I'm gonna get some of these beans for our next recipe for those that wanna keep watching. You'll need bacon, onion, garlic, a juicy tomato, jalapeno, and for those spice lovers, you can add some chiles de arbol, tomato, chicken, bouillon, or salt, ground cumin, brown sugar, Mexican oregano, and your choice of beer. Press your saute button. Anywhere from five to 10 minutes, you're gonna notice that your instant pot heats up. You're gonna add your bacon.
And if some of the onion and garlic came along with it, that's fine. It's going right in the same pot. For those of you that like it with uh, weenies, the hot dogs, or you can use chorizo for this part, or some chopped ham. That would work great in here as well. This is a views club tip for you guys, okay? Do not move the bacon. You move the bacon, we're gonna produce more steam, and then we're not gonna sear, because you guys know my searing is awful because I'm always rushing in the kitchen. <laughs> and I'm always like, don't turn it. Don't you always say don't it. move it, and me, I just like moving things <laughs> around, but don't move it, and it's gonna sear the way we want it. It doesn't have to be seared on both sides, just as long as we get it on one side, it's gonna work for our Instant Pot. But if you see, we're developing that crust we want at the bottom. So that's a tip from the Views Club. Thank you guys so much for sharing all your lovely tips with us. We love you. Make sure you guys are reading those comments. After three minutes, you're gonna see all that nice fat relief. You can move it around. And not to worry, friends, all that deliciousness you see at the bottom is exactly what we want. We just wanna wake up that bacon and say it's time, okay? Now we're gonna add the rest of our ingredients. Ready? Garlic, onion, tomato, and jalapeno. Or as some of my friends say, jalapeno. I love it. <laughs> Ooh, can you guys see? I'm doing my best. Friends, just know, stir all those ingredients. The magic pot. Once you mix your ingredients, allow it to saute for another two minutes. After two minutes, you're gonna add your cumin, or as much of this as you can on the plate that I chose to do it. Just a lot easier. <laughs> Give it a mix. Ooh, you see how soft it's getting? Mm -hmm. All those delicious crusties are coming off. Mm -mm -mm. That's exactly what we want. Add your beer. I'll let all my friends that like alcohol have a moment right now because that's just beautiful. Okay, back to work, friends. <laughs> Add your bouillon or your salt, whatever you chose to go with, and your sugar. Stir all your ingredients well. It's an instant pot. You want to make sure that they get distributed evenly. You left some on the wall. Did I? Mm -hmm. There you go. Thanks, Cloud. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with the instant pot, if you see where you left it, if it's stuck somewhere, it stays there for the most part. And you'll get the food burn, food burn. I'll stop. We're past <laughs> that, guys. I'm a pro on this Instant Pot now. You like that? Now, we're gonna add our beans, okay? If you guys follow the recipe of the beans that I made, I kept two cups of the bean juice and two cups of the beans. Now, for those of you that are gonna be using canned beans, there is no problem in cutting that corner. I'm with you. Go ahead and add your beans and you're gonna add the same amount of beans that you use. So if you used eight ounce can, or a 10 ounce can, you're gonna use the same amount of water, okay? You have to make sure that there's enough water there to cover your beans and cook them properly. And then we already added the beer, so for those of you that don't like alcoholic beers, you guys know that I'm a fan of non-alcoholic beer, go for it. One of the best beers to make for your borracho beans are dark, lager, whatever you like. Go ahead and use that one for the best outcome, but for me, you know, I'm making it comfortable for my home. <laughs> me, me, me te saca, sa, sa. Make sure you're closing your bed. <laughs> <laughs> All right, friends, let's set this Instant Pot. Pressure cook. And we only need eight minutes, friends. Ocho minutos. I just released the steam and boom, done. Ooh. <laughs> I'm coming in. And right after your beans are done, you're going to add your Mexican oregano. Ooh. The aromas. Mm-hmm. You keep that good, good flavor of the oregano fresh, and it continues to cook in this broth because it's so nice and hot. How do you feel me being this close to you? I'm very happy because I can smell oregano and I love Mexican oregano. It's one of my favorite, favorite things in the whole world. Yummy. Whoa. That's okay, awesome. let's have a taste, friends. And to top it off, you can add a little bit of chopped onions and cilantro. Just a little extra, you know. 
say ah. ah. For those of you that haven't had this particular style of beans, you've been missing out. I don't know if you guys are going to go back to any other whole beans. I'm going to my tortilla. Te perdí a poner una canción. Si vas a estar de DJ, pues aquí estoy tratando de darles duro, pero there we go. Okay. Why don't you call it sarté? I want to say sarté. 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 Supermodel work. What is it? <laughs> work it, girl. Yeah, work. Do, Do your, your thing. thing. <laughs> On the dance floor. Work. <laughs> Have a girl. <laughs> work it, girl. <laughs> sarté. Sarté. <laughs> Those of you that think that this is a steam bath, you're wrong. It says saute on my button. That's what's going on. The chili powder I'm going to be using today is from Old Mission. It's a Wajillo chili powder. And if you guys just have the whole chili and want to make it at home, I'll link a, um, a recipe in the description on how I make it. But today I wanted to share something with my busy friends. So if you guys are busy, can't grind it on your own. This one's pretty good. It's pretty tasty. It smells fresh. Now let's get started. I have the setting on my Instant Pot at a saute and I have it at six minutes. That was the option that I chose. Now we're gonna saute our beef. I'm gonna go ahead and add my salt. Girl, I feel it's so easy, I'm making salsa. <laughs> And now I'm going to go ahead and add our chili powder. We want our chili to get in that initial heat so it can coat all over our beef. And you know, when you cook the chili powder a little bit, it just gives it a little bit of a, of a stronger flavor. And that's what I like. I said flavor, not spice. But it does help bring out the smokiness of the chili too. It really does. Add your chopped onions and your garlic. We're going to continue to saute all of these ingredients for three more minutes before we get started on pressure cooking. Okay, I've canceled our saute and when you give it a good stir, you're going to be able to smell the chili and the beef and that carne con chile coronado that we all love. You should be able to smell that combination just by this. And I'm adding hot, hot water from our kettle. Give that a good stir so that you get any kind of uh, chili powder that got stuck at the bottoms with the fat juices from the beef. Ooh. Make sure you give that a good stir, okay? Add your potatoes. And if you don't like it with potatoes, you can keep it out. Add your chicken bouillon, your cumin, and your black pepper. Close it. Make sure that you have your uh, spout up here on steaming, not venting. No time to vent right now. I'm gonna come in here in the pressure cook. I'm gonna go for about 28 minutes. So hang tight while this cooks. Once everything is cooked, we're gonna go ahead and add our oregano okay and you want to add this at the end and kind of give it a little bit of a of a stir just because you don't want to burn it while it's cooking in there you get that bitter taste mm -hmm. and i love oregano stir that in quickly yeah friends i have these little cups in the amazon storefront they hold about a cup and a half and they're really working for our family. I'm trying to teach my children some portion control and myself as well. And this is a perfect serving, I think, you know? So let me go ahead and uh, get some beans and my tortillas ready, and then we're gonna taste this. Okay, we're just going in for it. Yeah, this is what I love. I'm sorry, I love getting my fingers dirty when I'm eating the carne con chile colorado. It's my favorite. The best way.
Oh man, that's soft. It feels like I would have uh, cooked this for at least like two hours. That's how soft that is. Mm. Oh my goodness, this is amazing. I think you guys are gonna love this. Hello and welcome to The Views Kitchen. Happy Taco Tuesday, amigos. Today we're gonna be making a classic tacos de lengua. We're gonna make it super quick by using our Instant Pot. Now let's go over our ingredients. You're gonna need beef tongue. And when you purchase your beef tongue, you're gonna notice that you have uh, some bloody, you know, little liquid, just like any kind of protein. You're gonna add vinegar to your water and some salt. And this is how I was taught to clean uh, my beef, my proteins that are gamey. Connect with your food friends. And I'm gonna let it set here for about eight to 10 minutes, okay? To boil your lengua, you're gonna need onion, salt, black pepper, bay leaves, garlic, and a clove. Since we're using the Instant Pot, my ingredients are a little bit different. If you have a whole peppercorn, use that. I'm out for today, so I'm making it comfortable for my home. You'll need enough water to cover your tongue. Add your onion, garlic, clove, bay leaves, pepper, and salt. Make sure to seal your vent. Press pressure cook, and we are gonna pressure cook for 40 minutes, okay? I'll talk to you guys in 40 minutes and let you know what we're gonna do next. Tacos de lengua are best served on small little corn tortillas. If you don't have small corn tortillas, not to worry, just get whatever tortillas you have in that refrigerator and warm them up. For the salsa, you'll need tomatoes, onion, salt, chiles de arbol, and a roasted red bell pepper. Now, let's head on over so that we can roast a few of our ingredients. Add your tomatoes and your onions to a hot pan and continue to roast until they're nice and soft. I'm gonna take my onion and put it in the little food processor. Somebody wanted a big old piece of onion. That was not me. I'm gonna take my tomatoes and place them over here because I need to slice them before I place them in there. And I'm just gonna roast my cheetahs out well, just a little bit. Those take two seconds. I'm gonna turn my burner off. Well, they take more than two seconds. They're gonna take like eight for 10. You smell that? Oh, that smells amazing. It smells like a good guisado, right? Mm -hmm. My okay. favorite. All right, the, once you can smell them and you're about to start coughing, take them out. Now, if you have babies or kids, make sure you have your vents on and you keep them out of the kitchen. Add your tomatoes. I'm just gonna press it a little bit just so we can get a nice top and then I can add our um, roasted bell pepper. Add your roasted bell pepper and I add it just for sweetness. It's gonna balance out that flavor from the spice that I'm looking for. And your salt. And now we're just gonna pulse until we have a finely chopped salsa. How many seconds was that, Cloud? Like 26. 26? From when I started. All right, so I pressed it down 26 seconds. You guys got this. You ready to taste this? I'm ready. All right, say ah, you guys gotta taste this. If you need more salt, this is when you would add it. If you want more spice, add more chile de arbol. And if you love it just like this, then just love it on your tacos. And boom, done. Our 40 minutes have elapsed and we also let our lengua set here for 20 extra minutes. We kept the steam and we are now gonna release the steam. It smells delicious. It smells just like it, like when you make uh, shredded beef, that's exactly what it smells like, friends. And because I'm a mom that loves, I'm gonna tell you this broth tastes very similar to a shredded beef broth. All you're gonna do is add chicken bouillon or your favorite bouillon just for a little bit of extra flavor and you're gonna drink it. You're gonna drink it as consomme. This is exactly, this is one of the best uh, consommes you're gonna have, honestly.
Do you think it's gross that I drink my plain without anything in there? For this per onion? this particular one, you can <laughs> chop up a little cabbage. Whenever it's beef, I like cabbage on top of it. But you guys mm -hmm. can, you know, you can consume this however you want. If the kids are like, ooh, mom, I don't want the lingua, give them the broth in a little bit of a fideo or a noodle soup, and you guys should be set. Whether it's elbows, your shells, whatever one you have on hand, it'll work with this particular broth. You can save it, freeze it, and use it for your guisados. Do not dispose of this broth. What a great idea. Thanks, Mom. Okay. Friends, those of you that are here for curiosity, don't be scared. If you eat eggs, you can eat lingua, okay? What we're going to do is we're going to peel that layer we have from the tongue. And if you see in the Instant Pot, it just comes right off. And be careful because it's really hot, okay? You just want to find a spot where you can peel it off from. Just like that. Nobody wants to eat this. Not even Cloud. Can I see the... Oh, there you go. Thank you. Just like that. You're really giving everybody angles, aren't you, Cloud? Well, yes, because I know that we have, for example, like Samantha and a couple of other teenagers and young adults that make your dishes. And I like to give them these angles because they are new to cooking. Well, Cloud, all I have to say is that you're the best Thea Cloud anyone could ever ask for. And the best sister. And the best friend. Thank you. And... That motherly love that you give is like no other. Aww. I love you, sis. And I love these kids, so I have to help them out. <laughs> I love you, too. We love you guys. Views Club Junior, we're here for you. If you need me to slow it down, I will. You know I will. And it's not just the knife on why it's so tender mm. and it slides right through the creaminess. It's going to be creamy, smooth, tender. Okay? Okay, friends, now you can begin slicing. You can go as thin or as thick as you would like. If you have friends that are trying this for a new time, I would say go really thin, and this is medium. What do you think? You learned your lesson, that is medium. That is medium. Now, for those of you that wanna slice it for your tacos like you would in Mexico, you gotta have a bigger chunk. It really is just a personal preference, but for my squad to eat it, we gotta chop it up really fine. Okay, I'm gonna add a little bit of oil to our pan that we're gonna place our tortillas on because I like them with a little bit of the, of the oil on them. And I'm also gonna show you how to steam them as well, okay? So just put a little bit of oil on there. You can make, you can crisp this up as well, but it's not that kind of taco. You want the meat to be tender. Tender, tender. So I'm gonna add a little bit of broth at the bottom so that nothing dries out, okay? okay. And how much water did I add? About half a cup. You'll see with your pan and your portion, or depending on how much lingua you're adding, just to keep it nice and, uh, nice and, and juicy. I'm just gonna warm up three tortillas for my tacos that I'm gonna share with you guys right now and to share with Cloud, because then I just start the assembly line. Boom, 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 serve and go. For those of you that like more of the steamed tortilla, you just wanna place it at the top of your lengua. Maybe raise your heat just a little bit so you can get more steam and you'll see that slowly, they'll get soft quickly. Our tortillas are ready. And as soon as they get soft, take them out, because if not, they're going to fall apart, and it's like within seconds that you have. And then just fill as much as you would like. I have some chopped cilantro and chopped onions, and I'm just going to sprinkle it over the top and let it fall where it's going to fall. <laughs> That's usually how it works, right? That's right. I'm already pushing it with that much. <laughs> Who's ready for a taste? Say ah. Ah. Mmm. Nice, smooth, tender. Juicy. This is a tenderoni. For those of you that have never had it, I'm confident in this recipe for it to be your first time. I need a little bit more salsa, girl. This is good. Okay. I guess I can handle more heat than I thought. 
<laughs> well, they say if you can't handle the heat, get out of the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> I can have, let's see, three, six, nine. I can have nine of these. Nine? Yep, with the small tortillas. You definitely can. I think I can. I think I can do nine too. <laughs> yes. Easy. Easy, easy. Friends, this salsa with these tacos is a great combination. I hope you guys are excited to include this into your dishes. And for those of you that don't know how to make it, well, now you guys know how. You know, we say we hate to eat and run, but we're going to eat and run. We love you guys. Take care of one another. And I hope you have a beautiful day. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> You're going to ask me how spicy that is. That is extra hot. This is only for spice lovers and people that can handle it. You can also make the salsa. For those that can't handle the spice, just remove the, the peppers and make it with the rest of the ingredients. Okay? Okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> so I have a mouthful of rice and salsa. Okay, Mika, because you're, you're a little bit wild. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Hello and welcome to the Views Kitchen. Happy Taco Tuesday, amigos. As requested, today we're going to be making carnitas tacos. And no, I'm not gonna be doing it in a copper pot, but I am gonna be using the Instant Pot. So these are gonna be super quick and delicious. Let's go over the ingredients. You'll need some pork shoulder or pork butt or any kind of pork piece that you have that's nice and chunky will work for this recipe. You'll need a little bit of pork fat or shortening, milk, fresh orange juice, water, a small bay leaf, garlic, your favorite corn tortillas, salt, we're gonna season our pork with some salt, and by some, I mean the portion that I recommended, okay? Now we're just gonna massage it gently, just like this. Set your instant bot, bot. Apparently set I, your instant pot now. Apparently I said your instant <laughs> pot. Friends, what I mean, set your instant pot on a saute and give that about five to six minutes to warm up nicely, okay? And while it's warming up, we're gonna add our portion of our pork fat. Remember I mentioned that we had a lot of tacos last week or Cloud did? Uh, I saved the fat from our chicharrones. And that's the fat that I'm using and it smells so delicious and it's gonna give this a good coat That's gonna add even more flavor, you know, so just smelt that nicely now you want to add your pork pieces You see, when I'm adding my pork pieces, I'm kind of moving it around so that I don't produce too much steam and it doesn't create more of a stew. Because that can quickly happen. We want to sear them, okay? So allow them to sear a little bit before you add the next pieces and kind of wiggle them a little bit. Okay? You with me? I'm here. Woo! Clouds hypnotized by the smell. Yummy. I'm also going to add my pieces of garlic while we're searing, okay? Imagine if I said searing and Siri starts talking to me. <laughs> really? Mm -hmm. At 
after six, seven minutes, you're gonna get a good sear on your pork pieces. This is what we have going on. Now we're gonna go ahead and clear our setting. Add your water, your orange juice, and your milk. Add your bay leaf and give that a good mix. So just scrape the bottom of the Instant Pot so that you don't have that food burn message that comes up and dumps us off. You know what? Why don't you stop? <laughs> She's going to start with me. You guys know this. Me and the Instant Pot have a lot of fun together. <laughs> I have a lot of fire in me, friends. That's why I like to cook, probably. Get to be in the fire all the time. Wow. Without, without getting burned, girl. Without getting burned. FMB. <laughs> Cloud has a lot of jokes today. You're the one that wants to be Fire Marshal Bill. I didn't say that. <laughs> Don't listen to her, you guys. Only sometimes when she's being a good girl. Make sure your vent is closed so the steam doesn't come out and you're gonna press pressure cook and we're gonna do this for 32 minutes. Once your carnitas are ready, you're gonna remove them from your pot. And if you wanna make some ramen with that broth, you can. It's gonna be up to you. So we're just gonna take our carnitas out and we're gonna remove that broth, okay? I know why you said that. Why? Because that's what we're gonna be doing next. <laughs> <laughs> and this works too. These carnitas work. Slice them up real nice and they're gonna be great with your, with your ramen. Did I ever tell you you're my hero? Really? <laughs> Love you too, Cloud. Place your Instant Pot on saute, and you want to add the remaining pork fat. The carnitas are tender to the touch, nice and soft. Look at that. That's how I like my carnitas, to be a little tenderoni inside. Some tenderoni? And I think I'm gonna love her for the rest of my life. <laughs> That's how I feel about those carnitas. Do you believe in love and all that it can do for you? Or you can chop it up a little bit finer if you want, you know? It's gonna be up to you. I mean, you can do it however you're comfortable. Oh, so now you're flexing just because they're pulled apart like that? Well, they're a little bit hot, but... <laughs> Careful. Girl, it's like in Mexico, you know, you just get that big old pile. Yes. The paper, yeah. Mm-hmm. Done. And sass. Mm-hmm. So it just depends on how you guys want to do it, okay? Now that we've done that, let's go ahead and add it into our pot. Hello to all the people that are learning how to cook or trying to be independent. Those of you that have small spaces and you're making the best of it, we're here to help. And we're excited about it. Yes. We've had to cook up some small spaces as well mm -hmm. in our past. Because Friends, I'm not that bougie, okay? <laughs> doesn't mean you can't enjoy the, the process. We got you. Once you add your carnitas, you want to keep them there. What I like to do is I like to keep them seared on, the ones that are at the bottom are gonna sear really nicely, so the ones on the top are gonna stay nice and soft, so we're gonna have a little bit of both textures. But if you don't want any of that, you guys already know how to handle this. But this is what we're gonna do because my kids love that crispy uh, parts when they bite into it. You see those crispers down there? Don't worry, I'm gonna scrape them out. Well, it's, it's steamy in here, girl. Look at that. I'm gonna scrape all those little bits out and I'm gonna put it in our bowl and let's get ready for these tacos. What you doing? <laughs> Sorry, you know, you're I know, you're funny. You're funny. Um, 
Listen, I know that sometimes I look bougie and prissy, but when it comes to the kitchen, I will get down and dirty. And with this one, I had to bring my mom's spoon so that I can scrape all those delicious crispies from the bottom, because you're gonna find that they do get a little bit stuck, um, but not to worry. That's exactly what we want, so we can get those crispies. So do you guys wanna come and see? I wanna hold that steel spoon in. I've known it for at least 40 years. It's older, <laughs> it's, it's older than you. It's older than you. Nice one, I'm coming. That's the good stuff. See, so just because you're cooking in a small kitchen doesn't mean that you can't get that delicious flavor from your carnitas. And let me tell you guys, this one is definitely, it's up there in flavor. I feel pretty confident that I got all of it now. This little grill over the stovetop is an 8x12 linked on our Amazon storefront. I know a lot of you have had questions about it, um, but if you need help finding it, just let me know in the comments. Yep, we love it. We use it often. And we get that nice, nice little char on our tortillas. Boom done. How many tacos are you guys gonna eat? Let me know in the comments. I'll answer a question right now. I'm gonna have four. Four? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm gonna have as many as I feel like having, girl. Whoa. I'm hungry. Sounds reckless. Okay. Give me a number. I'm gonna put a few droplets of the salsa on the bottom. Don't worry, I'm not done with my salsa yet. The salsa I'm using is a roasted salsa verde. And it came out amazing today. Yeah, everything's just it's in my flowing. favor. It's flowing. Yeah, everything's in my favor today. It was meant to be for me and these tacos. You know, when I say my or me, I, I'm not trying to just be selfish. It's just, it's the way we speak, guys. But I mean us. I mean ours. You guys, you guys understand me. Okay, this is gonna be optional. We have some white onion and some cilantro. Now you want to add your desired amount of salsa. Optional, but you don't have to. Some pickled purple onions, and I love them. And I pickled our radish in the same container as our onions some there for extra okay you don't need it but if you need some lemon we're gonna enjoy that too cloud's gonna get a big old taste say ah uh. ah uh. get that taco stance ready yeah you gotta get it ready fix that hair ladies and gents Good. I hate seeing so good. It's delicious. It's magical. It's what paradise it really, feels like. It really is so, so, so good. So the next good. best thing would be a coffee date with Jason Momoa. <laughs> Girl, you're really asking for it. <laughs> <laughs> These are so, so good, friends. The pork is tender. My tip to you is going to be use po pork shoulder. Pork shoulder is gonna give you the difference in your carnitas that it's gonna set your carnitas apart from everybody else. Mm. This is amazing. Go with corn. Yellow corn. Especially 
We love you guys. We'd love to stay here and chat, but we've got a lot of tacos to eat. Buen provecho. Take care of one another, and we love you so much, so very much. Bye. Take your chuck roast pieces and place them into your Instant Pot. Add your water. And if you see my water steaming, is because I used the kettle. Make sure to add enough water to cover the beef, okay? Onion, you're gonna add a whole garlic and chicken bouillon. Make sure your vent is closed. That's venting. Mm. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. <laughs> Make sure your vent's closed, okay? This is a sister show where we help one another. The show doesn't stop and start when this camera's on. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and press your pressure cook and we are going to cook this for 33 minutes. Anywhere from 30 to 33 minutes work. I like to take those extra three minutes so that it can be nice and soft and juicy. Add your hot water and if you don't have hot water just bring it up to a boil, okay? Add your potatoes, add a pinch of salt, put a lid on it, and we're gonna continue to cook our potatoes for about 10 minutes or until they're nice and soft. I have my pan on a medium high heat and we're gonna start roasting our tomatoes. We're gonna roast our jalapeno and be careful because summertime, for some reason, my jalapenos are a hot fire right now. We're just gonna continue to roast our tomatoes until they're nice and charred and juicy and you're gonna see them sweat. They're gonna be screaming for help. You want them nice and roasted, okay? What I like to do for a little bit of extra flavor is I'm gonna get my lemon and I'm just gonna put it on the pan so that it can give it a little bit of that grill flavor so that when we use it in our salsa, boom, we have some more flavor. Oh yeah. Get your lemon and all those delicious bits. Pick them up. Bring them with you. Bring them with you, we need them. Okay? Don't be scared of those nice roasted bits. We want all that deliciousness. Now it's time to remove our tomatoes, our chile, and our juicies. Salt, oregano, and squeeze the roasted lemon juice. And we're no strangers. Sometimes you are gonna get seeds. Try and take as many as you can out. We're human. I need a cuchara. Hold on, guys. <laughs> or you can leave it in and play the game. Who found the treasure? Who found the treasure? Well, if you don't blend them good, somebody's gonna have a fit about it. So let's not give anybody a fit, okay? Let me see. Well, this lemon believes in reproduction. It has so many seeds, girl. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, those are a lot of seeds. All right. And now, just blend until smooth. All you have to do is taste salt. And if, you're, if you like the salt that I recommended, great. If not, you can add a little bit more, okay? Delicious, quick, chunky salsa. Let's stick a fork in it. You stick a fork in it and they're nice and soft. Yes, that's how we want it. We want it super, super soft to where they're just gonna crumble apart, okay? Let me strain that for us. And be very careful, it's hot. Before we add our shredded beef to the mix, we're gonna season our potatoes with a little bit of black pepper. And it's not just our potatoes, it's gonna go into our shredded beef when we mix it up. Some uh, ground cumin and our salt. Mash it up. We want it nice and soft. Go ahead and taste your potatoes and the seasoning. And if you need a little bit more salt, you can add a little bit more salt, but that should be good because the flavor's in the potato and that beef. Take your tortillas, and you're just gonna place it on a hot pan. All we wanna do is soften the tortilla. We don't wanna overcook it to make it stiff. 
Um, you can also do this with oil if you have really good tortillas, but the ones that I'm using today are the Guerrero brand and they've been falling apart. So just take it easy, but this is how I'm gonna warm them up just so that they're pliable for us to make our tacos. What did we agree on? One tortilla is better than no tortilla? That's right. I think a lot of you voted that you'd rather have tortillas and we're with you. Friends, I know some of you mentioned that you were a little bit worried about using the Instant Pot. This Instant Pot is pretty safe. You just wanna stay clear of the vent and when you open that vent, it's the steam. So just don't put your hands over it. Just make sure you release it to somewhere where it's not hitting anybody in the face or your body. And now that I've said that, we gotta release some steam. Oh yeah, and always tell the kids when you're working with the Instant Pot not to come near the kitchen that it's dangerous and they can get burned and they usually comply. Yep, they usually listen because they're excited about what's in that pot. <laughs> When you see the pin has dropped like this, that means that you're ready to open. If it's still gushing a lot of steam, you're not ready. Stay away, okay? But we're ready, we're safe, and I wanna see this delicious beef. How about you? Yes. Make sure that you cancel your Instant Pot, okay? This is so tender and juicy. I'm just gonna place it right here. What are you gonna do with all that broth? You wanna save some of that broth, friends, and I'll show you uh, very, very soon what I'm gonna do with that broth. Oh. But I'm for sure gonna save it. For those of you that love garlic, you can use and this garlic and squeeze it into your mix, but today we're gonna keep it to the side. And save it for me. Mm-hmm. Somebody's already looking at me. <laughs> You guys know Cloud's looking at me, friends. I love to rub that garlic on my tortilla with a little bit of salt and lemon. You sound so sexy when you say that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> For our ladies that have arthritis or you have certain things going on, um, prop it into your mixer. The Views Club taught me how to do this, and now that's what we do. <laughs> and the gentleman with arthritis as well. Okay, okay. Men, I need you to represent a little bit more because I don't see you so much in the comments. And ladies, I don't know. You guys are owning it. What can I say? I always see them in the comments. Well, do you? <laughs> are you flirting or what's no. going on? No, <laughs> oh my gosh. And boom, done. And if you have any pieces that have too much fat on it, it's really easy to find. And then you can either eat it with your tortilla or you can just eat it like this. I'm not thick and juicy for just staring at the food, guys. <laughs> I taste it. Now find another one with grease in there and give it to me. I know. <laughs> That's what I'm doing for. Make yourself useful <laughs> while you're down there. It is so fall apart tender. Nice and soft. No, Cloud, there isn't one for you. I think I got the only piece I had. The... You're going to have to give me something. I'm going to have to give Cloud <laughs> something here. Thank you. A big old piece. Thank you. Que ricura. Mm. Now let's transfer it. Transfer it. Let's My transfer. accent's coming out today. I don't know what to tell you guys. Let's transfer it into our bowl. Views Club Junior, if you're old enough and you're watching, make sure to help your parents by washing the dishes so that you can eat some really, really good food, okay? And I just get my baby voice when I think of them because you know I melt. I melt when I think of you, Views Club Junior, because I love you. <laughs> You're the best in the kitchen. I know, all the cute pictures. <laughs> when I see you guys on my Facebook, ah, uh, I can't. I'll be back on IG soon, friends. I promise. Very soon. Very, very soon. And now you just want to mix your ingredients. Just combine them together, okay? This is a production so that you can get done faster, okay? You're going to get your hands and you're just going to pinch. That's going to be about a tablespoon, a tablespoon and a half, for those of you that don't want to use your hands. And since this is nice and soft, you can just place it right here. I know it doesn't seem like a lot, but once you fry it, your taco, it is, okay? Well, because we're still gonna fill them up, right? Yes, we're still gonna fill them up. It's kind of like we did the ground beef ones. Because if you're gonna be making these and you're there with the spoon, Trying to be perfect, guess what? You're not gonna feed anybody and everybody's just gonna be looking at you with hungry eyes and not the dirty dancing ones, okay? Not those sexy ones that we all want. These are like hungry eyes, I'm gonna come and get you and I'll talk to you <laughs> for a few days if you don't give me the taco. 
I shouldn't have worded it that way, but it's too late, friends. You guys know what I mean. <laughs> I warmed up my flour tortilla the same way I did the corn, and these are gonna be equally as good. You know, I know some of you love the, the hatch chili. Tossing a can in here would just make this even better. Because I know how much you guys love that. No, recycle the can and then... Just kidding. Oh, no, oh wow. Oh, okay. <laughs> Add the green chili in the mix <laughs> and then you can recycle your can. Yes. Make sure to keep a little space here so it doesn't fall out for you, okay? Mm -hmm. And just like that, you can just have tacos all the time. Just take one day out of the week, get your family together, and you see how I'm doing this with my hands? Kids love using their hands, so I'm gonna call my boys out to help me fill the rest of them, and we'll see you guys shortly. I have something to show you. Just know that I didn't make all of these myself. I did get help from my family, and we got them done in like 10 minutes. So with the recipe that I'm giving you, you're gonna get about 50 tacos. So anywhere, I wanna say from like 45 to 50 tacos, depends on how you fill them and just go light on them. And I think you guys are gonna be happy because you don't have to do so much work for the following Taco Tuesday. <laughs> Place your burner on a medium heat and add a little bit of oil, okay? Just a little bit. We're gonna begin with the softer version, okay? So we're gonna place them down on a little bit of oil and then, I mean these delicious tacos. Okay, they're ready. Move them to the side. And they're a little crisp, nice and soft. Now it's time for the ones we love. Let's fry some up. Make sure your oil is nice and hot and we're just gonna start adding our tacos. These get done super quick, friends. And I'm gonna continue to uh, fry my flour tortilla ones on the pan that we have over here as well. That's my pan of tacos. <laughs> Ooh, looking good. Okay, friends, our tacos are nice and hard. It's time to get them over here on our tray so that we can continue with the rest of our tacos. Oh, friends, look at this cheese. Pick whatever cheese you have on hand, friends. Your favorite cheese is the one you wanna use and I've been lightly shredding and I love it. I'm really happy here. <laughs> Ooh hoo hoo, and these are not gonna break. They're different than the ones that you fry, like deep fry, okay, friends? Hey, how did that piece of cheese get down there? <laughs> because it's excited, it just wants to jump right in, the party. There's something about having a lot of this cheese. It's like a taco shop, it just makes me so excited. Who else is with me on that one? I'm here. Ooh, yay, Carl showed up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And the flour ones, I just like those with the cheese, girl. Cheese and salsa. How do you like yours? I like mine with... Um, I do cotija. I'm thinking, hold on. Okay, Cloud's thinking, guys. While she's thinking, I'm going to add a little bit of, of really thinly sliced onions to our hard ones. Okay, that's how I eat. I'll eat that like that. You're doing good. You can use a pickled one or fresh. Today, I'm up for fresh. And sprinkle it with some cotija right here. Now we're talking. Friends, you ready for a good taste? We're ready. Like a really, really good crunchy and soft taste? We're ready. Me too. All right, friends, get ready for a big, big crunchy bite. Say, ah. Uh. Ah. Uh. Cloud's being shy because you guys know what happened right now. She's already had some. I'm a little bit shy because I am gonna eat all these four tacos, friends, but it's Taco Tuesday, our favorite day of the week. Shy from where? <laughs> the frozen section, what do you mean by this? You know, like at Costco or the grocery store? Oh, the they frozen They have the frozen tacos, tacos they have the frozen, um, uh, roll tacos. Oh, I see. It's very, very soft and tender. And I, lo I know a lot of you prefer that. These are better because you're going to make them. Mm-hmm. 